welcome to the Make Life Fun Show. I'm your host, Josie Wheatman, and I am so excited that you're here. I have graduated the mom game. I have been in it now for almost a year. Can you believe it? Everett is walking. Wow, it's a whole new game. Through the last 25 episodes, I have learned so much and I have grown in my craft. I have grown as a mom. And the biggest thing I've learned is just love, 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 taking it in, giving it out, love, and being in the present moment with my son and continuously just giving him my regulated self as often as I can. And that is what's changing the game in motherhood. That is what's breaking my generation of parenting. If you are new to listening, you are in for a treat. Hi, mamas. Welcome back to the Make Life Fun Show. I am so excited to have you back with us. Today on the show, we have Vivi Tai, and I am so excited to have this conversation. Vivi, thank you for joining the Make Life Fun Show. Hi, Josie. Thank you so much for having me here. It's really my pleasure. Yes. I would love to hear a little bit about what you're focusing on right now, what is lighting you up, a little bit of your story, and what you feel called to share. Yeah. So I am the author of the book, Living Through Alchemy, A Transformational Journey to Freedom. I'm here to share about my journey and how I was able to obtain my freedom on a healing journey to become who I am today. Mm. And you just mentioned to me earlier about the show, this is not about self-acceptance. And that journey for me is on about self-realization and Mm. self-acceptance in order to find my own freedom and my peace from within. Mm. And for me is through the process of alchemy. Like we know about alchemy is chemical process of transforming lead into gold, but there's so much more on the surface of that concept. It's an ancient wisdom. If you look at it as a metaphor, it's basically transforming your old heavy an impure self into a higher self, someone that is more at peace, someone that can actually love themselves as the person. So it's a process of transformation. I started it when I left my job in the corporate world in the US. Do you know how I make my life fun? is by traveling. I follow my passion. I follow my heart after I left everything in the US. And I decided that if anything that didn't work for me back then, because I was following a society standard, then I was stressed. I was depressed. I was anxious all the time because I was on the wrong path of my life. So in trajectory, I decided that I didn't want to have that life anymore. I wanted to have a life that I can be fulfilled, I can be happy, and yes, a life that is more fun and nothing more fun than traveling. That is my biggest passion. And I went all out and I just followed that path. I went back to Vietnam. I traveled around South Asia for two years. Mm -hmm. I fell in love with my birthplace. Mm -hmm. I get to know Asia in a way that I didn't get to know Mm -hmm. before. After that, I immigrated to Canada because I wanted to build a different foundation in my life, like a second chance of life. So I decided to embark on a van life journey Mm -hmm. in Canada. (laughs) It's completely different than what my life was like in the U.S., You know, it was all about chasing the status and here I am all about living my own authentic self regardless how other people look at it. Whether other people accept it or not, my family didn't didn't accept it. But I just wanted to have my space, my way of living, my lifestyle in a way that I can figure out myself who I am by following my passion. And because van life gave me a chance 
to explore who I am besides exploring the outer world, you know, through traveling. Because I have a lot of time to spend time with myself. Mm -hmm. And I know that you already travel so l o l so you probably understand what it feels like to have mm-hmm. that time alone with yourself, right? So it's very peaceful, and you don't have the contamination, or you don't do you, you are not bombarded with mm-hmm. all the people, and so it's much easier to listen to yourself. Mm-hmm. You make your own decision. You don't have to compromise, and because of that, we get to come to know who we are. And when I did that, I started to feel the changes in myself. I started to be more creative, and looking back now, I was like, I can't remember. I can't really believe how different I was in the U.S. several years ago. And I'm like, I'm such a different person now, and I can't believe that I. Can even write a book because my background was on about technology. I was an engineer. I had a master degree in biomedical engineering. So my life back then was on about very mm-hmm. analytical. And now I'm like I'm using my intuition all the time to make decision where I go. I listen to my synchronicity, the signs of the universe, and all that. Other people may think this is woo woo, but to me, that is how I get in touch with myself, with the universe, with the nature mm-hmm. around me. You know. <laughs> oh my gosh, what a beautiful journey you have been on! Like when you were speaking, I felt that because when we're going down the wrong path, that is what brings up the stress. That is what brings up the depression and the heaviness that you were speaking of. And mm-hmm. when we can find space. To get quiet enough that we can uh-huh. start to listen yeah. to ourselves, then we can start to understand what is it that we need in all the yes. moments of our lives, so that we can take the journeys that feel more aligned. And so, did you always know you were passionate about this? Like, how did you just like go from being like you were saying so <laughs> this way to completely <laughs> transforming your life? Like, please take us on that journey. It is a very dramatic change. <laughs> And so some other people didn't really believe me when I make that change. But you know, at a certain point, you felt like it is enough. I listened to your story, and I could feel that as well. I and I think that at a certain point in your life, it's like this is enough. I don't want to do this anymore. Mm-hmm. It just felt like carrying a big rock on my shoulder every day. You know, I had to let that go because I didn't want to go back to that lifestyle. I just knew that I have to change. I knew that I had to do something else differently, and in order to do something else differently, I needed to change a lifestyle. During that time, I read the book The Alchemist. Mm-hmm. It was the book that gave me the biggest guidance. You know, you you probably know that book from Paulo Coelho. <laughs> Is a uh, is the most fascinating book ever, and in that book, the biggest lesson that I learned from it is to listen to my heart. So I I took that lesson to my heart, and I follow it, and I embrace it. Because I was the person very analytical. I used my left brain to make decision mm-hmm. all the time, and that led to destruction in my life. So at the bottom ground, at the blank slate, I just asked myself that if using my brain didn't work for me, maybe I should give my heart a chance mm-hmm. and let it talk. You know, listen to it and see what it has to say. So. That's how I discovered that my passion has always been about traveling, and that's how I should listen to it. Now I love traveling since I was little. Mm-hmm. I always wanted to explore, but because I was so busy with my life, with school, with work, I tried to please other people. I tried to really get my feet on the ground in the U.S. in a system that. I didn't really feel free. Where is freedom? Was what I wanted. Mm-hmm. It was what I chased after, but I didn't get that. That's why I decided to make a leap of faith, change my lifestyle. It wasn't very easy because 
I had a lot of questions from my family. They didn't really accept me with that decision, which is, what are you going to do with your life? Like, you're not going to make money. You're not going to make a job. You just go travel. Is that really productive? I think in society, because we have a certain path that we have to follow, mm-hmm. you uh, have to go to school, graduate, get a job. And walk until your eyes bleed, until you can be successful, until you can make money, and then get married and have family, and just follow that pattern. But I realized that really worked for me. I feel like I couldn't really keep myself into that narrow path because for me, I wanted something else. I wanted the freedom. I wanted to explore the world. I just wanted to follow my passion. So my family really struggled with me on that decision. They didn't accept it in the beginning. They didn't accept my van life in the beginning. And to my mom, she thought I was a homeless. <laughs> And she called me constantly and she asked, are you short on money? I can send you money. Please go rent an apartment somewhere, live like a normal person. <laughs> and she constantly asked me, like, are you going to go back to be an engineer? What you want to do in Canada? And I was like, no, I'm not going to go back to be an engineer. That's in my past now. I want to move on and I want to do a different foundation in my life, a foundation where I feel like I am myself. I no longer have to please other people. I no longer have to please my bosses, you know, make them happy and have to suppress myself. My life back then, I wasn't confident, even though I had a tough degree, a very high credential. I graduated from Ivy League. I worked for one of the biggest hospitals in the U.S. I worked at MIT, all that, but I didn't feel confident about myself. I felt I always felt very small because I always compare myself. Mm-hmm. with other people around me. I was in kind of like an elite environment of the best of the best scientists and engineer. And I felt like I wasn't good enough. So I didn't want to burden myself. That was the reason why I felt lost. Mm-hmm. I didn't know who I was. So I, I yearned for seeking myself, getting to know who I am. And that means I have to left, I have to leave that environment So when I have another chance in Canada, I ask myself whether I wanted to go back to that corporate life, whether I want to put myself in that environment again, and it felt really heavy. So I decided, no, I'm not going to do that anymore, even though my family keep pushing me. Like, no, you have to make money and get a job. And I think that there's so much money that you can actually make. And I feel like this society really focused you on just money, money, and everything is about materialistic driven. And we forget about our true self, our spiritual self, because we're so busy with the materialistic life, that 3D paradigm. So we don't have time to really dig deep and really do the work and get to know our spiritual self. That's the reason why I decided, no, I wanted, it it all started with my desire to know myself through traveling, through my passion. That's how it led me here. And that was the journey that I talk about in my book the concept of alchemy, the seven stages of alchemy, where I explained what each day really is and what it looks like for me, the challenges and what actually happened for me at each day and now how how I evolve through each different stage of alchemy until I become the person I am today who have more freedom in my life and I feel a lot more peace. Uh, I feel more at home within myself. I feel like I have reconnected with who I really am and I no longer have to face anyone. And from there, I realized that I can build a much better authentic uh, relationship with all the people around me. And the work that I do is also more authentic because 
I don't have to push myself so much、mm. in order to create something, to do something. I do anything because I feel called to it. So work doesn't really feel like work that way, even though you work really hard. You know, it's more like a, your hobby and your passion. It seems like you work hard, but you don't really work hard. <laughs> it's more like fun. <laughs>、yeah. I think you get to have fun in your life when you get more in touch with yourself and you you do what you love.、Mm, my gosh, so big, so huge! Oh my gosh, this story <laughs> is so good. I love that you're speaking on that people pleaser and needing to please other people, and like you're speaking on your mother saying. Are you homeless? How can I help you? Because people just don't get, they don't see it, they don't get it. They're like, how can you do that? Like that's not normal. Become normal. And so, what you're speaking about right now is like, don't be normal. Like, don't be normal. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> I think the word is probably inverted. You know, it's what we think normal to other people is not normal. It's like because the word is so truly driven, and so the spiritual word is abnormal.、Mm. You know, your true self is not normal. It's when you focus more into the soul work or the healing work. It's not normal to other people because it should be what normal. It's just normal because we are just so lost. Yes, that's a big one. We are so lost. I would love for you to speak on if you would tell us more about the book of the alchemy and the seven steps. If you would share a couple of those steps with us, because it is it is about doing that inner work and that inner healing. That I think people are so scared of what they're going to find. Yes,、right? that's the biggest thing. That's the biggest challenge because to face your shadow is really scary. Like to go back. I know that you have done therapist work, right?、Uh, for your mental health and all that, and it's scary. It's difficult to go back to that time. And I think the first thing is you have to go back. Like people think we have to go back there, and it's already scary. Then how can we even like accept it and Move beyond it and face it. That's the reason why the healing work, the soul work, is difficult because we you have to get through that first before you can move to the next stage. So the seven stages of alchemy explains the process of your own evolution. Alchemy means transmutation and transformation. And if you notice the world around you. Nature, everything has to change. So that is the essential core of alchemy. Everything has to transmute. The earth, the tree, animal, we all have to grow in some level. So that's the basic understanding of alchemy. However, if we go to deeper spiritual concept of alchemy, it's more about transformation of who we are. From a lower self to a higher self, it's like if you look at the metamorphosis of a caterpillar into a butterfly. That's one way to visualize how the transformation look like, and this can be pretty traumatic. A butterfly doesn't look like a caterpillar at all, and it went through a, a very long, dark process. In a cocoon, in order to turn into a butterfly that way. If you look at the seasons between summer and winter, doesn't look at all the same.、Mm -hmm. So everything have that seasonal process. There's always a certain change in nature. We are also part of nature.、Mm -hmm. We make of fire, earth, air, and water, and ether. So I'm not. Exception from that alchemy. So the seven stages of alchemy are the calcination, which is the stage where it breaks everything down. Is the first stage, and in my experience, that is the hardest time for me because you would encounter your first challenge, and it hit really hard、mm -hmm. because it. 
push me to the ground and kind of yank me out of the society and face the very hard truth, face my biggest fear, which was fear of shame at the time and fear of failure, fear of judgment, fear of unknown, all these things <laughs> that I have to face at the same time. That's why I said I was in the bottom ground in the blank slate of my life when that happened. It's hard because it's so painful when you face all of that and because you're not experienced. You mm-hmm. don't know anything and you feel uh, very alone. Like you have to face everything alone yourself. No one is going to help you with that. And, and if you try to cling back into the old life, the old way of thinking, you're still going to create the same circumstance. You're going to create the same challenge. So it is tricky because you can still go back to redo the process again and again, and you never get to your own evolution. Mm. So I feel really fortunate that I had certain guidance that helped me through that time. I decided that I would rather face my fear than clinging back to my own life to Even though I really wanted to stay in the U.S., at the time, I had already lived there for 12 years. So it was, I consider it like it's my home. I came there when I was a teenager, up until I I went to grad school and, and was working there. So it was really hard for me to let that go because it felt like everything that I was building over a decade that I lost in an instant because I lost my job and I was not allowed to stay in the country if I lose my employment because my employment was on H-1B visa basis. Looking back now, I realized that was my calcination stage and it needed happen to get me out of the 3D way of thinking and living and that I needed to go on a different path in my life. Now, so that led to the next day, which is the dissolution, where you would have to deal with your own emotion and your inner child wounding, Mm -hmm. like heal that part of yourself. It goes a little bit deeper into your subconscious, the wound, the emotion, the fear that you didn't know that you have. And now at this place, it's all come back up. So it's all about making the subconscious conscious. Mm-hmm. Bring it to light. Yes, exactly. So this stage is extremely emotional. And that's why this stage relates to the water element in the alchem- uh, alchemical process. You have to work through that deep wound. is incredibly difficult because you would have to learn to forgive And for some other people, looking back at the past and forgive the people that hurt you and also forgiving yourself Mm -hmm. is almost impossible because we carry so much hatred. We carry so much anger and resentment within us. And that's what makes us so heavy that we are not able to travel up to our evolution. So forgiveness is a big part and to understand that other people didn't hurt you because they wanted to hurt you so you have to have a different perspective you have to put yourself into their shoes and see things in their own perspective in order to forgive so at that time I was put in a situation that I realized I was wrong for judging and criticizing other people so harshly. And I become my biggest critics of myself. And that's how I came to be so harsh on everything I do. That's why I always feel like I was never enough because I always judge myself. And I learned this because of my mom. She used to compare me with everyone and it made me feel like I would never be enough. There's also many wounds in your inner child healing that when you go back to unsafe, it feels scary. And I know that you talk about you were being abused as a kid as well. And you think that being spanked 
it was normal in your culture. It was also normal in my culture too. So I was also abused the same way, but I didn't know anything about that. It was a place I get to learn all of these, my inner child wound that I didn't get to know how it really affect myself as a person. So after you, you go through all of that, get through with this healing in the dissolution by getting to know your inner child, by giving it love and healing mm-hmm. yourself and forgive yourself and all the people, then you get to the next stage of separation. Uh, and the separation is now a part of you has been separated from your own self. This is where you feel like, oh, I am a little bit different than who I was. I was no longer the same person who started the calcination. You know, you've, you start to sense a little bit more at peace. Mm-hmm. And it's the stage where you have a lot of questions about life. And it's, it's like it opens up something inside of you because now you are a little bit lighter and you have less impurity in yourself because you are a bit more in touch with your soul now. So it just, your mind is just trickles so many things around your environment. And now you start to wonder, oh, how the world actually works, how the universe actually works. <laughs> and I, I know that, yes, curiosity. yes. <laughs> so curious. <laughs> yeah, so I, I went to that place and I know that you have, when, you have been to that place too when you were traveling. And that was also happened to me. The more I travel, the more I questions about the world and how the universe works and about people and the different culture. I wanted to know everything. Mm. Uh, so that was the time that I also enrolled into coaching. I learned about meditation. I wanted to dig deeper into the healing work mm-hmm. just naturally. Mm-hmm. So the stages of alchemy, it happened to be very natural. Mm-hmm. But this was a very long process. <laughs> it's like each stage, it takes several years. Now that I, I know about it, I decided that, no, I want to take the active role and I want to be more integral, be more disciplined with myself so I can fast track it and also be on the floor and use that synchronicity to carry myself a little bit faster into the evolution. At the separation stage, I didn't know about the alchemy yet until the conjunction. So the conjunction is like another testing phase where I was put in a very similar situation. I was in the dissolution, but in a different way. <laughs> it's like every anything that needed greedy in yourself is really gonna push you to make it up, you know, so you have to be aware of it. So that's the conjunction phase was for me. But life had changed so drastically that you would feel so much more at ease with yourself compared to the previous stages like you know you have done the work the people the environment everything about you started to change that was really interesting about it it wasn't really scary for me uh, because I felt like I had better quite a people in my life and the work wasn't as intense it was like you can still feel certain emotions, mm-hmm. but it's not, you feel like it's not a intense. The trigger is not as painful mm-hmm. anymore. And you start feeling more like uh, you can get through it. Because you know that you have already done the harder work before. So the mountains now become a little smaller. It's more like a hue. Even though in the size, probably not is it's probably just as big, mm-hmm. but to you it becomes a little smaller because you know it's kind of similar problem, and you know that you have done it before. So it's more about perfection, like mm-hmm. trial and tribulation to get through with it. The fermentation, the next day, is a very long process and depends on you right so how much work you put into it that can be very long 
Um, by definition, fermentation, it should be a long dog process. It's the process where people often describe it a dark night of the soul, especially when something really harsh drop on you is in the tarot card. It's described as the tower card. It's mm-hmm. the scariest card in the tarot deck. So it feels like that, like a lining that flashed out and it breaks everything apart. So here is another test, another challenge to further refine the purification process. It needed a dislightening because what is going to be purified is so deep in your subconscious that if that didn't happen you probably not aware of it at all and you cannot heal it so these challenges are actually the blessings to help you get to know yourself and to heal all the deep spit wounds and deepest emotion of who you are is like peeling out the layer of the onions the deeper it goes, the harder it is, but it doesn't feel as hard because you have already been through all the layers, all the stages. So it's just the matter of your commitment, whether you really want to go through with your growth and push through or you want to stay there, you know, so it requires your dedication, your commitment to really do the work to pass through that the fermentation process. To me, in this stage, it's more about using my internal drive, my commitment to grow, to do the healing work in order to get through it. That's from my own experience. I'm not sure how other people would go through with alchemy. I think that the process of alchemy is different from person to person. That's the reason why I share my story, just to help the readers to see what is actually like mm-hmm. to go through these stages. But the exact events may not happen to you. It's not the same challenge. So it can be different. It can be personalized from person to person. But the core concept, the keyframe would always be the same. That's why I wanted the reader to reflect on my journey and to get to know where they are in the process Mm -hmm. and how they can go through with it and understand that is actually the challenge. It happens to you for a reason and that we shouldn't stay in the victim mentality, shrink ourselves down and feel bad about ourselves, feel bad about the world that, that everything happened to us. But have a higher perspective, a higher understanding. This is how the universe operates. This is what needed for me to change and evolve. So that's what we need to look at in order to make the difference, in order to go through the evolution of our life. So the distillation at the next day after you've gone through with the fermentation. Now, distillation is everything is almost pure. If you look at essential oil, it's very precious because it's gone through the distillation process. We use it for healing. We use it for to make good about our life. It's like the essential oil is like the soul of the plant. Mm. Right. So at this distillation, you get to the soul of who you are. It's the stage where you get to be more intuitive by opening your third eye so you can unveil the separation between the reality, the 3D world to the spiritual world. Mm. So now you're a little bit closer to that world. And what you're going to do with it is to pass down that knowledge, to pass down your lessons and your wisdom to help other people. Mm. And that is when you get to the philosopher's stone, the coagulation, which is the victory lie, because you cannot be the victor. You Mm. cannot be the person who is three ways the rest of the world is in suffering. 
the rest of the world is still trapped. That's why they said there's no freedom for just one person if the world is not free. Yeah. So those are the stages of alchemy. And it's, I, I think it's beautiful. And when I learned that, it really changed my life. It's the reason why I wrote my book. And it helped me to understand my life. Read my, I was able to connect the dots of my life in a pattern that I get to understand why everything happens to me and why I'm here and where I'm going next and what my purpose is. So that's why I'm here to share the message and share the work with the world. And because just like I said, you cannot just be free. It's just a single person with the rest of the world is not free. <laughs> so I have to do the work. <laughs> Yes, yes, to all of that. Like I could see at every stage how, like you were saying, every stage may take a long time, but it's up to us. Like we get to choose how long and what power we're going to put behind it and how much effort we're going to put in all those cycles. But what it shows these mamas that are listening is that basically you're not alone in this journey. Like we're all going through this journey of Mm -hmm. becoming that caterpillar to the butterfly. And that is such a beautiful journey. And that's such a beautiful book. And wow, thank you for sharing those with us because you're helping so many people with this story, with this book. Yes, yes. I actually have people like reach out to me through email and they said this helped them a lot to understand about spirituality, mm-hmm. to understand about their life. And I just feel so grateful, you know, to be able to share the message mm-hmm. and to be able to have the impact on people that way after coming out such a long time of healing and like I feel like being in the dark in that uncertain place and you don't know who you are to coming out to the place that uh, looking back and you see a lot of people in that place as well and you just can't help but you want to do something to be helpful and to help other people along the way to you know so I'm, I'm very grateful to be able to be in that service before when I was doing the engineering work I never felt really fulfilled now I feel like I'm always meant to do something meaningful but the work to me that then it didn't feel meaningful but it feels meaningful now and it's rewarding (laughs) I can feel it as you were talking my whole spine was lit up I was feeling fired up I was like okay like there is this natural progression and I could see I can envision it how the seasons change, we change, and we have to allow that change. And it's so, yes. it's so easier said than done when you've gone through those layers and gone through that walk. But I'm so excited that you're here and I'm here and we're telling the mamas that are listening, like, hold on, keep going. I think yes. that's the most powerful message there is. Yes, yes. And you know, like you said, when you change and you feel better and happier for yourself your son and you're happy and your husbands are happier too so it's like when we do this healing work it's not just about for us but it's also for all the people to build better relationship with all the people around us as well that's the reason why when we grow we make the ripple effect and Mm -hmm. most important thing is the people around us us in our physical space Mm -hmm. I think that's essential and when we are able to be self-centered and make that ripple effect is is, it's so beautiful because it's not just for us it's for all the people and and that's where harmony can happen Mm -hmm. that's where peace can really happen in the world that's how we create more peace in the world by improving ourselves growing ourselves be more self-centered be more at peace and be more free with who we are Mm, that's the magic that's the goal to find that freedom inside of us of who we really are and what you're saying to me is like a remembering it's coming back to that knowing of who you really are and yeah that journey that you just took us to, I think is going to be so beneficial for the women that are listening to put themselves through it and say, what stage do I think I'm in right now? Because having that visualization 
helps you hold on a little bit better. It helps you hold mm-hmm. a little tighter because you know that there's a light at the end of the tunnel if you keep moving forward. So I command yeah. you on the work that you're doing and I feel your enthusiasm, your passion for it. And as you were speaking, it was just, it was just apparent and evident. So thank you for the work that you do. And I would love for you to tell our mamas, our listeners, where they can go support you and where they can connect with you. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much. Uh, so I have a website called Living Through Alchemy where people can go download the first chapter of my book where I walk them through the basic understanding of alchemy and the tarot, the hero's journey. And my book can be found on Amazon. Um, as long as you have Amazon in your country, you can get the book. And I am active on social media through Instagram and YouTube. I also have a YouTube channel where I do videos about my van life. <laughs> so, yes, you're still living in a van. Still yes. van <laughs> I love it so much that I have been living in my van for four years now, but now I transition to seasonal because in the mm-hmm. winter time. It's just too harsh to be in the van. So I stay in the apartment during the winter time. And in the in the warmer months, I travel as mm. much as I can. It's, it's the best thing for me. And I just feel so alive to travel. This, this is where I draw inspiration. You know? mm. So my YouTube channel is called Personal Growth Through Van Life. And my Instagram is uh, as smiley vv05 i love doing photography the instagram is where i get to express my photography passion through traveling you know nature just get you so creative Mm. oh my gosh i could listen to you talk all day long all day this is just amazing (laughs) all the things that you're sharing just it's a passion for me too and it lights me up and your story is changing lives and I just appreciate you so much for your your time, your presence, your story. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Josie. Thank you so much for listening to the Make Life Fun Show. I hope you enjoyed yourself and got a little, little gems, little pieces of gold that you are taking to heart, that you are not just listening, but you're going to do something about it. I want you to be fired up. So yes, so we come once a week, come back, listen to us here. We are on all podcast places you listen. We are also on YouTube if you like to watch the show at Josie Wheatman. You can find us at Make Life Fun. And I am so stoked. And also come follow me, come play with me on Instagram at Josie Wheatman. I am dancing. I am showing my sweet baby. (laughs) And we're just having a ball. We're making life fun. And so come hang out with us. And thank you again for listening. Please subscribe to the show. Follow us. Leave us a review because the more you love up on me, other people can find the show and love up on us. And we build this community that is one of love and goodness. Also, I am taking clients. I'm taking one-on-one coaching clients. Like I said, we're talking about Bloom. We have a membership coming up and all the beautiful things. So there is a few ways that you can connect with me on that. So we have my website, which is backrosecoaching.com. You can go on there as well as you can join the mail list. So right now I have a 21 day raise your vibration challenge going on. It's an email challenge completely offhand. You wake up every day and you get these tidbits of goodness that light you up. So why not? It's a 21 day high vibration challenge. It's tools, it's simple, it doesn't require much. Most of them, if you want a little taste, is placing your hand on your heart and telling yourself you love yourself today. So yes, so come hang out with me, jump into my world. I've got you.